So today I received this packet, uh, which I purchased off of eBay, of course, uh, uh, of a extra battery and charger for my video camera. And uh, something I remarked about was that uh, this actually seems to be shipped from a company registered in Germany. And uh, this charger looks a lot like one of these generic Chinese chargers you can get uh, out of China and these tend not to be very safe all the time. And the way stuff usually works in Europe is the importer is responsible for the safety of the product they sell. And I'm kind of curious as to whether or not they have actually taken any precautions about that. So I figured we'd take it apart and have a look inside. Because for VHBW's sake, this thing better be safe, else they could be in some serious trouble if someone was to get hurt by using their products. So these usually just come apart with a single screw. I know this one seems to have two. I have tested and it does work. So at least we've got that. Seems to be glued shut. There we go. So they certainly have a point by gluing the enclosure shut because I believe that's actually a requirement for certain products like AC adapters being sold in Europe. So how's the isolation on the board? Well, that actually looks quite reasonable. I'm positively surprised. We've got very clear primary secondary isolation there. Well, well, that's curious. We don't seem to have any suppression capacitor going from the primary to the secondary. That's unusual. That's not good. You need to have that in order to suppress EMI from these things. So I'm not certain this thing would pass the AM radio test. Other than that, though, this thing seems to be a quite acceptable quality, I'm happily surprised. We've even got a TL431 voltage reference there, so this thing is going to be relatively accurate as far as voltage is concerned. And this little T92 part is labelled 13001PCBF, so that's either going to be an integrated uh, switching IC or just a transistor. It's labelled Q3, so it's probably just a transistor. And then it goes go straight into the rectifier on one side through a low value resistor straight into the rectifier on the other side, so there's certainly not much in the way of input filtering. I have suppression definitely isn't this uh, the strong part of this thing. But from an electrical safety standpoint, I would say that this thing is doing very good for itself. I think uh, VHBW might actually be saving their own asses because this definitely doesn't look like the normal Chinese ones you get. They definitely do not look this good on the inside. Even the soldering quality looks to be pretty okay. It, they are very shiny joints indeed and uh, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of sputtering or excess flux from the hand soldered parts going on at all. I'm very positively surprised by this, vi this thing. Very positively. In fact I almost dare use this thing 
that's a primary battery charger. Although we do have, of course, generic cheaper capacitors. This being a 470 microfarad 16 volt part with no real discernible brands. Uh, yeah, is that something? Hue Hong. Hue Hong. So definitely generic. And there's that in a YC brand, 4.7 microfarad, 400 volt primary. So that's properly rated at least for 230 volt operation. So yeah, what can I say? This charger seems to be very nicely built. I'm very positively surprised. Although they do have the kind of dicky contacts here for the universal charger adapter as is common on these where they just I think these look to be screwed in place but these are not known for making good contact they are spring loaded but they are just tin plated so yeah they're probably good enough as long as you keep them clean though there's no connection to the battery made other than the positive and negative terminals, but I checked and this thing uh, it does pertain to 4.18 volts, so it isn't going to overcharge the battery unless there's a component failure, so I think the current and possibly voltage monitoring they apply on this thing is uh, going to be good enough for charging a battery relatively safely. As for the battery itself, I haven't taken it apart. It is uh, glued together. They have their VHBW logo on it. Four BP77 replacement lithium ion battery, 3.6 volts, 2400 milliamp hours, 8.6 watt hours. And apparently, it's got the best warranty. Actually, I'm not certain as to what warranty conditions there are on these batteries. I, since they're from eBay, I would really not expect there to be anything in the way of warranty at all. Although for the, this particular battery, I did notice that it uh, doesn't uh, do the proprietary Canon battery communication thing, so the camera will not uh, give you any kind of runtime estimate estimate and nor will the camera charge the battery so you really do need to use an external charger but that seems to be the de facto standard for these uh, replacement uh, batteries for these Canon camcorders I am torn as to whether or not I should take this thing apart let's take it apart That came apart rather easily. So what do we have? We have a rather simple looking protection circuit uh, with a, a chip labelled... It's an ST, it's labelled 5N20V. So that sounds a bit like a transistor. And we've got uh, one labelled C9213. F23A. So, so that's probably the protection circuit I see there, and this is the transistor to disable the connection to the cell. There's nothing on the underside. So, can we actually get a look at the cell? It's going to be glued in. Seems to be glued in. There we go. It 
actually doesn't seem to be gliding at all. It was just a very tight fit. So what we have, we have three stacked lithium polymer cells labelled A16J13O80X. I'm not entirely certain as to what that might mean. There's some text written on them if we remove that plastic blanking plate, but it doesn't give a hint of any capacity on them. And this thing is quite anonymous, very anonymous. We can actually see, if we look at the reflection there, we do have a date on the board which says 2012 to 29. So that's probably the year revision date for the board, not the manufacturing date, I would hope. And the board is labelled RHWBP718E1. Well, that's a bit curious since uh, this is a, a BP727, which is the higher capacity version of the 718. But they're clearly just using the same board since these are not uh, in, in any way sh smart. I really wish I could get uh, some kind of capacity code off these uh, cells. Nope, I can't seem to manage finding anything about these. But uh, given their size, I would imagine that uh, they're pretty much as big as they're going to be able to fit into the case because there's certainly no not a whole lot of extra room inside. So, as far as capacity is concerned, I would think that these batteries are relatively honest. The build quality certainly seems to be pretty okay. We've also got the negative terminals bonded straight to the outside of the case of a the battery there. Still a bit of insulation there, which is a nice touch, I suppose. And the positive terminal is quite well insulated with a rather thick piece of cardboard. So there really isn't much to complain about with this battery, nor the charger. Especially not for the price paid. I paid 11 euros 39 cents for all of this. So, there you go. I would say that I'm quite comfortable both using and perhaps even recommending these. I need to review my footage in order to figure out how to put this thing back together again, because this is a bit cryptic. Anyway, that's the VHBW battery pack and charger for the Canon Ligria series. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this interesting. Cheerio! There we go. Good as new. Cheerio. Cannot communicate with a battery pack? Continue using the battery pack? No, it must be defective, of course not.